Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Christopher McLeod, who asked me to review Virus. Good choice, Chris, because now the 2020 is almost over, who doesn't want to keep hearing the word virus? Virus is a 1999 sci-fi horror movie based off a Dark Horse comic book series of the same name written by Chuck Farrer, a screenwriter known for movies like Dark Man, Hard Target, and Red Planet. It was also the feature-length directorial debut of John Bruno, a special effects expert who's worked on everything from The Abyss, Terminator 2, Batman Returns, Titanic, Avatar, and many others. Now, I've done a few movies directed by effects guys on this show before, but this one's a little different. While most movies directed by effects artists are independent or direct-to-video productions, Virus was actually put out by a major studio and got a wide theatrical release. Then again, it didn't exactly get a primetime spot, since Virus was originally supposed to open in the summer of 1998, but got delayed several months, finally getting released in January the following year, which is traditionally a dumping ground for movies studios don't have much faith in. And they may have been onto something, since Virus wasn't exactly a hit with either critics or audiences, but hey, when has that ever stopped me before? So let's check out Virus. Well, Dark Horse made some of the best comic books based on movies ever, so maybe a movie based on one of their comics will be good. Mmm, the 80s Apple II font is how you know shit's about to get serious. Uh-oh, looks like I put in a Russian knockoff of Apollo 13 by mistake. Also, I'm not sure if this is a Russian thing, but this lady seems to be really turned on by guys playing chess. This is a Russian satellite vessel, a, oh, sorry, Wessel, communicating with space station Mir. However, they're soon interrupted by some leftover effects from the movie Supernova, which is another expensive bomb I need to get to one of these days. <laughs> Damn, the penalty for pirating satellite TV in the 90s was harsh. Cut to seven days later, where we see a ship hauling some cargo in the middle of a storm. And even though I just did one, this looks like it could be the beginning of a Godzilla movie. Wait, is this a Godzilla movie? Wait a second, this boat can't sink. It's got the most recognizable actors in the movie on board. And, you know, also a random Baldwin brother, I guess. Captain! Captain. Once we're in the eye, we'll have calm seas for two hours. <laughs> Donald Sutherland has the same look on his face I did after I finished watching Things. Even if they manage to keep the ship from sinking, I think they're gonna lose their cargo. I'm cutting it loose! Stay away from that door, mister! Look, it's just a bunch of Jar Jar Binks merch for when Phantom Menace opens. Just let it sink. They end up losing the cargo anyway when the barge sinks. And what's worse, Gordon Lightfoot isn't around to write a song about it. But even though the cargo's gone, at least we still have dialogue exchanges like this. Let me tell you something. You ever put a gun in my face again? I know what? You figure it out. I didn't think that far ahead, okay? But if you ever ask me that again, I promise I'll have a comeback ready next time. With his cargo lost, Captain Sutherland has no choice but to go to his room and remember a time when he didn't always play the old guy in a movie. I let you down, lad. Oh yeah, here's another thing about Donald Sutherland's character. He has an accent that he goes in and out of through most of the movie. Hold your horses, mister! I'm still captain here for 30 million dollars. I'm willing to overlook all what's come between us. You're listening to a pile of Russian rubbish. I think he's supposed to be Irish, but most of the time he just seems to be playing drunk. Yeah, which I guess is kind of the same thing. Okay, Donald, all you gotta do is pull this trigger, and that means you won't have to be in Jock the Hero Dog. Oh, hang on, I still got Hunger Games ahead of me, too. Eh, I guess it could wait. Eventually, they stumble onto the Russian ship from the beginning, and apparently they never learned that creepy fog and wrecked lifeboats are nautical signals for stay the fuck away. The academic Vladislav Volkov, missile and satellite tracking ship. 45,000 tons full grow, 642 feet. Oh, hey, she's looking through the big book of horror movie settings. All right, time to climb aboard and see if they can raid some of their supplies. The captain's running low on liquor and could use some vodka. Bridge is deserted. <laughs> Oh, never mind, there's still some jump scares on board. 
Let's see, completely deserted with blood everywhere? Oh, this place seems on the up and up. What do you think, pirates? Nah, pirates won't be popular for another few years. Because the ship seems deserted, the crew decides to try and salvage it to get a percentage of what it's worth. $300 million, 10% of that is $30 million. That's what's coming our way. If you're talking about the movie's box office, yes, $30 million is coming your way. Too bad the movie costs $75 million. However, there's one problem with the captain's plan. If there's anybody alive on the ship, you can't claim her. Well, then let's not find anyone alive. What does that mean? Just that. I hope we don't find anyone alive. I'm sure he's the hero of the movie. All right, time to check the rest of the ship and see if Deep Rising's also being filmed here. I don't know about that movie, but by turning the power back on, it looks like he just wandered into a Matrix sequel. Oh, wait, this came out before The Matrix, didn't it? Shit. Somebody's running this. I don't know much about computers, but that's an anchor. Well, I know a lot about horror movies, and that is not going to be your first kill. Instead, you'll just have to make do with a flesh wound in your boat sinking. We lost the tug, Squeak. She's gone. That sucks. Mm, sounds like you're really broken up about it. We lost the tug, Squeak. She's gone. My boat. Listen, I think we should split up into two groups. I agree. Splitting up is always a good plan in a horror movie. Also, be sure and show everybody a picture of your kids if you haven't done that already. Another thing that's always a great idea, investigating mysterious noises in dark places. All right, look, we don't want to blow our gore effects budget just yet, so instead you'll just have to die via messy tubing. As bad as things look, these guys are really lucky this boat's Russian since they always have tons of weapons no matter what the ship's purpose is. Even their cruise ships have all-you-can-eat bullet buffets. And that ain't all. Tactical short-range surface of air. This is beautiful, man. Yeah, I can't wait until you guys use it at the end of the movie. Hey, Woods, look at this. Looks like some kind of ejection seat or escape vehicle. All right, come on, fellas. You can foreshadow the climax later. Right now you got work to do. And if you were wondering why the Russians would have so many weapons on board... It's so they could use them for more jump scares, that's why. I can't believe it. It's a lady. This is Russian chess lady from the beginning. And because there's a survivor, that means you can't salvage the ship. But since she shot at you, I'm sure nobody'd mind if you just threw her overboard. <laughs> All right, fine, we won't throw you overboard, Jesus. Well, this is a bit of a twist. Usually Jamie Lee Curtis is the one getting chased by somebody holding a sharp weapon. I'm not gonna hurt you. My name's Kelly Foster. I'm Nadia. Nadia Vinogradova. Okay, well, I'm just gonna call you Nadia. Nadia explains that an alien entity made of electricity beamed itself down from the space station and took control of the ship, killing all of the crew members. Well, thanks for the exposition. Now tie her up, fellas. I'm not a threat! I'm not a threat! Could've fooled me, lady. In addition to taking over the ship's computers, the alien also started making some weird robots. Because hey, it's a movie directed by an effects guy. We gotta have some effects in this movie. And don't get close to him, idiot. <laughs> Well, that was your own damn fault. There you go, just randomly shoot shit. That is a way smarter idea than poking some of Ed Gein's erector set creations. Steve, this is Richie. There's another Russian down here. The son of a bitch shot at us. Are you sure? It looked more like a Borg to me. Nope, my mistake. It's actually a half-eaten Terminator. You're all going to die. You hear that, Foster? We're all going to die because there are aliens on this ship. Uh, aliens, Terminators, I mean, John Bruno did work on a lot of James Cameron movies, so it kind of makes sense. One of my men is missing, and I want some answers. You think that just because your accent's more convincing than mine that makes you better than me? Is that it? Hmm? All right, as much as this movie borrows from stuff like The Thing, Alien, and a bunch of other movies, the concept of an alien who builds various creatures out of both machine and organic parts is a pretty original twist. Or at least it would be if the movie Moontrap didn't exist. And if anyone's wondering what Moontrap is, eh, I'm sure I'll make a video on that one too eventually. Okay, time to learn more about what we're dealing with here and show off more gore effects. Some kind of coil or self-contained power supply built right into it. This brain is still alive. Eh, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Oops, never mind. There's still some jump scares left in this thing. There's no alien. Something their government cooked up. It's run amok and you're afraid the rest of the world's gonna find out about it. Dr. Igor fucking Frankenstein there. Igor was the assistant, not the doctor. 
The captain thinks this is a result of a Russian medical experiment, and even if it was, I'd still probably want to get the fuck out of there, but whatever. I got even more bad news, you're headed straight for the perfect storm. Well, at least that movie made money. Listen, the control room's a little too well lit. You guys should move someplace more dingy. Look, somebody even wrote Red Rum and Russian on the wall. Okay, let's see, I already made a Borg reference, so how about Lord Dread? Anybody get that reference? Squeak? Hey, I've been assimilated. Resistance is futile. You know the drill. Oh no, not that guy. You just killed Coach Snyder from Elm Street 2. When he said he wanted to die while getting fisted, this is not what he meant. Eventually they try talking to the alien, because so far it seems like it'd be reasonable, doesn't it? Who are you? Is that it? Is it? Is it the thing? No, but you are gonna get compared to the thing a lot. And if you thought the title was referring to the alien, get ready for a twist. What species? Man. You are virus. Hmm, yes. Perhaps it is man who is the real electrical cyborg demon. They now plan to go to the ship's main computer to try and kill the alien. Cause yeah, that seems like a way better idea than talking to it. And this movie managed to avoid the cliche of the black dude dying first, so instead we'll do the one where he flips out and runs away. Who's gonna care about the ship? Who's gonna care about the ship? He's gone postal, man. Yeah, remember the 90s when that was a saying? Going crazy seems like a better plan than what the captain does, which is try and cut a deal with the alien. Hey, maybe if you offer it 15% of the reward money instead of 10, they'll let you go. Oh shit, it's worse than I thought. The alien's got Hector from Saturn 3 working for him. Oh well, the robot effects were the best part of that movie. Might as well show them off here too. Good. God, this place is like if Sid from Toy Story was played by David Cronenberg. Alright, here's one thing I will say about this movie. Most films directed by effects guys are low-budget ones that usually don't show off what they can really do. But because this was put out by a major studio and had a big budget, we actually get some decent robot effects here. It's pretty amazing. Well, with no head and all. You know, even if the captain doesn't believe this is an alien, this is still some pretty freaky shit. And look, man, I know you want to survive the movie, but you made it more than an hour. That's pretty good. Actually, now that I think about it, we're pretty far in, and so far only two crew members have been killed. That's a pretty low body count for a horror movie. <laughs> Oh, never mind, there goes another one. Meanwhile, this guy looks like he's auditioning for a Tank Girl remake. Well, Dark Horse did put out that comic too. So besides taking over the ship and making runaway robots, what exactly is the alien trying to do? Lord Howe Island, there is a British intelligence station there. They have digital linkups to all the military and commercial satellites in the Southern Hemisphere. Every military satellite in the Southern Hemisphere? Oh shit, if this thing gets a hold of Uruguay's nuclear arsenal, the world is doomed. And there's even more bad news. Jesus Christ. Aw oh, shit, Cyborg Sutherland. You don't recognize me. The alien said if I joined him, he'd fix my accent. Doesn't it sound more authentic now? I'm totes Irish. Faith and Begora, boyo. All right, will somebody please put Donald out of his misery? Okay, he's dead. That means Donald Sutherland can finally collect his paycheck and go home. Well, now you know blowing them up works, so time to do that to the entire ship. And there's about 15 minutes left, so make sure that's what you set the timers to. And I just want to say, I'm really glad that so far this movie has relied mainly on practical effects instead of overusing a bunch of CGI like a lot of movies from this time. Okay, it's a late 90s movie, so I guess we were gonna get this eventually. Alright, to be fair, they did also make a full-size animatronic of this monster that weighed about two tons. And even when the movie does use CGI, it's far from the worst I've ever seen. You know, the more I watch this movie, the more it seems like hardware if it was directed by Michael Bay. And now that I say that, I wouldn't mind seeing Richard Stanley make a Transformers movie. Also, since I've been comparing this to a ton of earlier movies, in the interest of fairness, I am gonna say it's interesting how similar the robots in this are to the ones from The Matrix which came out after. Jesus, can anything stop this thing? Huh, that's weird.
I could have swore they were going to use that missile they made such a big deal out of earlier. Eh, of course this thing's not dead yet. It's still got to kill this guy. Damn, I really thought I was going to make it until the end. Oh well, there's only ten minutes left and my name's not on the poster, so I guess I still did pretty good. And speaking of people who aren't on the poster, that means you gotta go too, Nadia. Are there more of those devices aboard this ship? Just one more. Okay, so now is that thing dead? Nope, guess not. Okay, it's pretty obvious you're gonna use that missile and ejector seat thingy you foreshadowed earlier, so let's get to it. Also, while the effects have generally been pretty good so far, this is one part where they really start to take a nosedive. Oh shit. Alright, you blew up the ship and stopped the alien. Maybe. If it's made of electricity, I'm not really sure how you kill this thing. So now the question is, is this movie gonna do a real final jump scare, or a fake-out final jump scare? <laughs> ah, fake-out final scare. Alright, I guess that's a little less cliché than the robot coming up out of the ocean. Like I said earlier, Virus bombed at the box office, making less than half its budget back. Critics hated it too, giving it extremely negative reviews. And even Jamie Lee Curtis went on to call it the all-time piece of shit. Alright, this movie definitely isn't great, but I think I have different standards when it comes to all-time piece of shit movies. Seriously, go watch War of the Robots and then get back to me about how this is the worst thing ever. Hell, this isn't even the worst movie Jamie Lee Curtis has been in. The biggest things going against it are that it's not the most original movie ever, borrowing heavily from several other films, and it also indulges in a lot of horror movie cliches. But, the robot effects are well done, and it is kinda entertaining to see Donald Sutherland drunkenly half-ass his way through the movie. I can see why this didn't exactly set the world on fire, but again, by my standards, this isn't even close to the worst thing ever. Now that I've done this movie, maybe I should do another one based off a Dark Horse comic series. Like that Time Cop sequel nobody remembers. By the way, yes, there was a sequel to Time Cop. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.